Okay, so let's start on chapter two, which is on biochemistry. Um, one thing you'll notice is um, the homework assignment that I'm gonna assign to you for chapter two is much lighter, much shorter. And that's because I'm not gonna get heavily into biochemistry. Um, but I want to do a basic review, and especially those of you who haven't taken science for a while, um, I want to kind of refresh your memory on the basic classes of biomolecules um, because they become important when we talk about how bacteria and, and other microorganisms reproduce themselves, and then also, you know, how antibiotics work. Um, we're going to hear some of these terms again and again and again, so I thought it was good just to do kind of a refresher of biochem just as it relates to microbiology. So um, yeah, the homework will be much lighter. And um, really, when you're reading the online text, you know, try to stick to just the topics that I cover in this PowerPoint, because I'm not going to go off into, you know, get really deep into biochem. Um, and the book goes a lot more deeper. So um, anyway, just, you know, kind of follow along with this PowerPoint when you're doing the homework. So First thing I want to talk about um, are just to review the types of chemical bonds. And, you know, I love using analogies when I teach. And so I thought I would try to describe these chemical bonds in terms of online dating sites. So the first type of bond we're going to talk about is an ionic bond. And bonds, remember, are occurring between different types of atoms. So when a molecule, which is made up of atoms, um, forms an ionic bond. Um, it's still an important type of bond, but we define that bond as being weak. You know, it doesn't last very long, so it's short-lived. Um, it's not like the two atoms are actually sharing electrons. It's more one atom says, hey, I need an electron, and it steals it from the other atom. So when I was thinking about dating sites, and I've never been on the Tinder, but my understanding is, you know, like you swipe right, I guess, if you like the person, swipe left if you don't. And my understanding, and maybe it's different, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of more of a hookup site. It's not like where you go to find your soulmate. I could be wrong, but that's what I think of when I'm talking about ionic bonds, okay? They, they don't last very long. Um, you know, they're not super friendly and nurturing, um, you know, very, and they're weak, okay? So you can always tell an ionic compound because when it hits water, it will dissolve. So think, for example, sodium chloride, which is our typical, you know, just table salt. When you put that in water, it dissolves and uh, dissociates into sodium ions and chlorine ions, okay? So um, chemicals and molecules that contain potassium, calcium, you know, you would not wanna be made up of ionic bonds because every time you would get in the shower or jump in a swimming pool, you would immediately dissolve. But ionic compounds are very important in physiology. Um, so basically, if you think of, you know, an IV bag, you know, maybe with electrolytes that you hook up to a patient if they're dehydrated, that's all full of ionic compounds that are very important in physiology, like muscle physiology, when we talk about calcium, you know, you're uh, keeping your heart beating, having, you know, the correct amount of sodium and potassium. So ionic bonds are important, but you don't want to make up, you know, tissues and organs out of them because they are very weak. Okay, so basically, if it hits water and it dissolves, that's an ionic bond. Okay, then we move on to the covalent bond. So the dating site I chose here is eHarmony, which also I've never been on, but my understanding is this is the site you want to go to when you are looking for you know, your soulmate, the person you want to have, you know, babies with that you want to take home to meet your parents and marry, you know, you fill out, I think, a questionnaire that's about 20 pages long. But a covalent bond is basically, okay, this is someone I want to have a long lasting relationship with. We are not going to steal each other's electrons. We are going to share our electrons. So covalent bonds are very strong and long lasting and the electrons tend to be pretty much evenly distributed around the two atoms when they make a molecule. Um, so it takes a lot of energy to be able to break them apart 
and they are not going to dissolve when they hit water, okay? So your cells and your tissues and your organs are made up of covalent bonds. So that's why, you know, you take a shower, you jump at a swimming pool and you don't dissolve. Covalent bonds are also the type of bonds that make up the major classes of biomolecules that I'm gonna talk about in this lecture and that are really important in microbiology. And I'm sure you've heard of the majorities of these because you know they pop up a lot in terms of our diet and nutrition, but carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and then also nucleic acids, um, which are DNA and RNA, okay? So the big classes, all made up of covalent bonds. Okay, so here is a representation of what the two different ones look like. So if you can remember back to your basic chemistry, let me grab a pen here to point out. Um, so an atom has a nucleus, okay? Don't confuse that with the nucleus of a living cell, okay? Atoms are the lowest form of matter. Um, matter can either be alive or not alive, but in their nucleus, they're gonna have protons, and then when they get bigger, they can also have um, components uh, called neutrons in the nucleus. And then electrons are the particles that circle around the nucleus, and however many electrons an atom has in its outer shell, that determines how reactive it is. Okay, so if we're looking at electrons, which are these little red guys, in an ionic bond, you basically have one atom come in contact with another and say, hey, you know what, I need an electron, I'm just gonna steal it. Okay, so when you look over here, both of these electrons are now being uh, hogged by this atom, and there's no electrons over this atom, um, which is, you know, whatever, but that is gonna be very um, easy to dissociate and not very strong, and so an ionic bond will dissolve in water. Okay, if we look at a covalent bond, notice here, you have an atom and another atom, and look at this, they are going to share their electrons. So they're evenly distributed, and that's what makes a covalent bond so strong and long-lasting. Okay, so really, those are the big two. Ionic dissolves in water, covalent doesn't. But there is a third type that I just wanna mention, Okay, and that would be the hydrogen bond. Okay, it's not technically a chemical bond, though we refer to them as hydrogen bonds. It's kind of like a weak attraction. Um, I wasn't sure which um, dating sites to pick, so um, I, I had no idea. There is a dating site for people who, um, you know, can't consume gluten, who knew? And then unfortunately with my age category, I qualify for cougar life, um, but you know, no, no, I'm not on there, just FYI. Um, there's also an Amish dating site that I found. There's a bunch of kind of weird ones out there, but anyway, I digress. So a hydrogen bond is basically in water molecules, okay? It can be in, uh, it's also found in other molecules like DNA, we'll talk about, but in water, you have H2O, okay? And the water tends to have a slight negative charge, whereas the two hydrogens have kind of like partial positive charges. And so they end up being attracted to each other. But hydrogen bonds tend to be very weak, okay? And, you know, if you have a few of them, it, they're very easy to break, but if you have a lot of them, it can actually make, um, especially water, um, be a very hard surface, okay? So they're kind of weak attractions. Um, we'll talk about them most in terms of DNA because the beauty of DNA, having hydrogen, hydrogen bonds, is that the DNA molecule can actually unzip and then zip back up on itself. Okay, so here's what hydrogen bonds look like, and this is shown in water. So remember, um, water is H2O, and the water molecule tends to have a, or the oxygen, excuse me, tends to have a slight negative charge. The hydrogens have a slight positive charge. And so you end up with all these weak attractions. Okay, so water typically, you know, we think of it as being, you know, a, a liquid and it's very, I guess, soft. You can think of it, right? You can step into a bath. It doesn't hurt when you take a shower and you're getting doused by water. You can pour it into a glass. But 
if you have a whole bunch of these, like millions upon millions of hydrogen bonds in water, um, water can actually be a very hard surface. So if you've ever had the unfortunate, um, you know, event of doing a belly flop into a pool or, uh, you know, being on water skis and then kind of wiping out, I think you know that water can actually be a really hard surface. And the reason it is, is because of the millions upon millions upon millions of hydrogen bonds, okay? It's also why when you're, you know, you're really hungry and you want water to boil so you can make your macaroni and cheese or your pasta or whatever, it takes a lot of energy and time to boil. That's also because of the hydrogen bonds that are seen. So if we talk about water, and water is incredibly important um, to the functioning of our bodies and in physiology. So here's some of the properties of water, and a lot of these are due to hydrogen bonds. Okay, so first of all, water has a high heat capacity. What this means is that once you get it hot, it's gonna stay hot for a while, and it's gonna take a longer time for it to cool off, okay? So if you, you know, decide, oh, I need a bubble bath, and you run water in a bathtub, it doesn't instantly cool down. You can sit in that warm water and it's gonna stay warm for a while so you can enjoy your bath. It also has a high heat of vaporization and meaning that it takes a lot of energy, for example, to heat up a, you know, a pan of water to the point where um, it becomes steam. That takes a lot of energy. The other thing in physiology that becomes really important is evaporative cooling. And this is how we maintain a constant body temperature. So when our temperature is starting to get hot, we start sweating, um, the water evaporates, and that cools us off, okay? so. That's what that high heat of vaporization is. Um, water molecules are polar, meaning that they do have those slight positive and negative charges. So substances can be dissolved in them, you know, such as salt and anything, you know, that would have an ionic bond that you would maybe have in an IV bag to get a patient stabilized. One thing is that um, also water is involved in pretty much every chemical reaction that happens in your cells. So it's incredibly important in physiology. So when people you know, die of dehydration, um, it's really because some of their, you know, the cells start to shut down because they don't have water to perform a lot of the chemical and physiological reactions that are needed you know, to continue with life. And then finally, water, you know, we have a lot of water in our bodies, especially in our abdomen, and it's there to just protect and, you know, cushion our organs as well. But um, all of these properties are due to hydrogen bonds. Okay, so to summarize, um, you should know the difference between the, the types of chemical bonds I discussed, the difference between covalent, ionic, and hydrogen bonds. Okay, and then we're gonna start talking about carbon in lecture number two. All right, thank you.